what's going on? So today we're doing something a little bit different. It's too windy to go fishing, so we're gonna show you something that I think is the most important thing to have on a boat when you're going out for a long day. Now this is my dad, Brian, and if you didn't know, I actually used to work for him, and he owns the canvas factory in Pompano Beach, Florida. And we're gonna show you a little thing that he makes all the time that he can actually ship to you anywhere in the United States if you just taking a few measurements. So let's get to it. You wanna tell them what we're doing? Yeah, we're gonna show you this 247 Riballo. We chose this boat because it needs a forward sunshade as well as an aft sunshade. It didn't come with rod holders, so we're going to show you the install of those. And the reason that sunshades are so popular now and so important is because everybody's concerned with skin cancer. And a lot of the guys are in the back of the boat fishing and they think, oh, well, I don't want a sunshade. And the wives and the kids are up in the front of the boat on the cushions. And you got to think about them. You got you got to make them happy and comfortable. And it'll actually extend your day of boating. If you go out and it's scorching hot, before you know it, the people in the front of the boat are going to start to feel uncomfortable. And they're going to start to look, you know, sunburned. So if you put up a sunshade and you extend the shade on your boat, you extend the pleasure on your boat as well. So we're going to show you how to do that. So as I said, my dad custom makes these and we're going to go through putting up the forward and aft sunshade now. And he's going to show you what comes with all the stuff when he makes these. Since this is a four pole sunshade, two in the front and two in the back, I tried to design it so that both poles were the same length so they would fit in the same bag and you weren't trying to figure out, oh, what's the front poles and what's the back poles. Now these are, are gorgeous stainless steel poles and they come with this padded storage bag because they're beautiful 316 stainless steel with pulleys and clam cleats. So I'll stick this one in and I'll get another one and we'll put this one in. And you can see just how fast and easy these things go up. Now I'm going to leave the other two poles in there for the back for now. I made two storage bags so that when you, you know, if you only want to use the front or only want to use the back, you're not digging through two storage bags. I mounted this one aft, and here's the bow sunshade. And watch how quick and easy this is. And the reason for the storage bag is this is a snow white stamoid cover. And if you stick it in some compartment that isn't pristine and clean, before you know it, this isn't going to be pristine and white anymore. So who cares if the bag gets dirty? See how easy that snaps in? As long as your sunshade is nice and white every time you put it up. You just click it right in like that. Now you, you bring it forward and you stick the rope through this pulley, through the cam cleat, pull it as tight as you can, and hook it. Now you take this rope, stick it through the pulley, through the cam cleat, pull it as tight as you can, stick it down. I like to wrap the rope around the stainless steel like this, makes it look nice and nautical and neat. Just like this, just takes a few seconds, just like that. Come over here and do this one. Now if your boat already has rod holders, this is most likely the direction they're going to be. People ask me what rod holders to use. I like 15 degree. I don't stick this straight out and I don't stick it straight off the side. I usually stick them at like 10 o'clock and two o'clock. So you see just how quick and easy it goes up. Now people can sit up here while you're fishing in the back or whatever you're doing at the sandbar. Now it's blowing 21 knots today with gusts up to like 25 to 27. And look at this sail shade. It's, it's barely moving. So that tells you that you can run this boat up to 25. I don't know how fast you go. Maybe you could go faster, but it's blowing 21 and it's doing nothing. So I would assume you could run this at least 30 miles an hour. This one, because it's small, we're going to leave this boat and go to a larger one, which you won't be able to go fast with because it's enormous. But these small ones, you can run pretty good. Now, I'm going to go to the back of the boat and set that one up. Here's my back pole. I designed it 
the same length as the front ones. Grab my bag that says half top on it. Pull out my pristine white sunshade. Now you just have to figure out which way it goes. So I'm going to click this one. Click this one in, just as easy as that. Come over here, stand up on the gunnel, make it easier, click. Now I come down. These rod holders were already in the boat. Most boats come with aft rod holders, and they're usually on a 15 degree angle facing aft. So look, I tighten that. You can see the wind. It's, it's blowing today. But once we secure it, yeah, I'm not exaggerating. This, this, wind's, this wind's blowing a steady 21. All right, now, I look for wrinkles, and there's no wrinkles, so I know I have it right. Do the same thing, wrap my pole my uh, rope around the stainless steel pole, stick it in there so it looks nice and neat. And you always want to do this on the top side of this cam cleat, otherwise the rope can get wet and slide down the pole. So you do that, snug it. Now this one here it has a little more pitch, so I told the customer, I said look, I can build these aft poles longer and then you'll have two storage bags and you'll have to determine what's, what the front poles are and what the back. Or, you know, I'm six foot three and there's plenty of room. I can stand all the way in the back of the boat, okay, and it's not touching my head. There's pros and cons. All right, for a pro, this one would shed water if it was raining. The one in the front would not. If it was raining, you'd have to take that one down or it would puddle. So more pitch, shedding of the water better. Also, the lower you go, the more shade you create, the higher, you know, lets the sun come in. These are a breeze to put up. You put them up in one minute, and you can see this one. Same thing. It's, it's blowing as fast as it is, so that tells you you could run this boat at least 25 miles an hour. And these poles are so rigid that when it's blowing 25, they, they don't budge. They're 316, which is, you know, the better quality stainless. Inch and a quarter. We put the padded sleeve in the bottom so it fits tighter in the rod hold, holder. Real quality Ronstadt pulleys. So I, I try and make them as nice as I can. And in the video, we'll show you how to tie it up in the measurements that I require to build one of these for you. So that, that's it for this one. I'm going to take it down now real fast, and we're going to go to another boat and show you another one. So just for instance, if you've been at a sandbar or you've been at one fishing spot and you want to go as fast as the boat goes to the next fishing spot, you can throw this thing in its bag and actually leave those poles where they are and blast to your next spot without the sun shades down because it comes down in like 45 seconds. Goes back up in a minute. There's no reason why you can't. Just pull the pole out. Stick it in its nice padded bag. Pull the other pole out. Stick it in its nice padded bag. Okay, now we're gonna go forward and I'm gonna take this down. If you, if you watch, you, you can see that this thing comes down so easy. that easy it's that easy and one important thing with this stamoid it's a terrific material it's lightweight stretches out nice it, it should last you forever don't put it in this bag wet because if you leave it in this bag wet it'll come out moldy that's the only maintenance issue you have to do is store that baby dry 
And Stamoy doesn't like to be folded. So you see me just jam it in the bag. That's the proper way to do it. So you don't get fold creases in it. You just stick it in the little compressor bag and you're done. Pull my two forward poles, go back to my bag, slide it in. Each one has its own little sewn compartment so that that stainless steel stays nice. It doesn't scratch and it doesn't bang around and rattle. They're all separate little pockets. And you just Velcro it shut, just like that. And you stick that in a storage compartment. On this boat here, these happen to be 56 inches long. They're different on almost every boat. All right guys, so we are at Sundance Marine in Pompano Beach and they are an Everglades dealer. And this is a 435 Everglades and it seems like they sell these boats like hotcakes as we've worked on a lot of them over the years. And now we're gonna put up the six pole sunshade. We already have the poles in the rod holders, so now let's put up the sunshade. Fisher's gonna help my dad put it up and I'm gonna film. Before we set it up, I just wanted to tell you from the last boat, the poles were 56 inches on that 247 Ruballo. Now this 435 Everglades is such a large boat and the gunnels are so high that the six poles on this boat are only 48 inches. So that, that's key, every boat the poles are, are a little bit different, but it's it's pretty much a four inch pitch from the hard top to here. That's what I like, a three to four inch pitch. Now Fisher and I are gonna set this this up with yeah. So I'm just gonna click that in. You got it, Fisher? Yeah. Okay. Now The reason we're doing it like this is, is this boat's parked on Federal Highway and it's it's a little dirty. So we're trying not to get this pristine white cover too dirty. So we're taking it out little by little so it doesn't get on the boat. Now, I like to pull the forward most poles tight first. So put it through the pulley, through the cam cleat, and then crank it down really, really tight and stick it in there. And then wrap it around. Okay? Cinched up nice and neat. Then I'm gonna come to this one. Okay, Fisher. I think you're good. I think yours is tight. Wrap this one. I like to do timed videos so you guys can see just how quick this is. But I would say this install took less than a minute. Just crank it tight. Look at that, we're done. This is a monster sunshade, one of the largest that we've made. It's 16 feet from the hard top to the front, and this material comes 102 inches wide. So that's as wide as I like to make them, is 102, because they look real pretty without any seams. And 102 inches is, is definitely wide enough. The reason that this boat needed six poles is because it's 16 feet long and this rod holder was kind of forward. If this rod holder was maybe here, we might have got away with, with, four, with four poles. But since this one was so far forward, there was going to be about an 11, 12 foot span without any support. So these rod holders were here, so we, we made two more poles and and utilized it. That 247 Roballo that we showed you, I know you could you could run that boat 30 miles an hour with those forward and aft sunshades. I don't think that's going to be possible here. The wind is still blowing 21 knots, gusting the 25, and you can see, I mean it's not waffling in this wind, but it, it does create a little bit, you know, I, I don't know for sure, but I think a, a huge one like this is best for sandbars trolling, going down the intercoastal, maybe um, 10, 15 miles an hour. I don't know how well this one would do at 25 because honestly, I've never been out on it to, to try it. But I know she'd be good at trolling speeds or 
or 15 miles an hour. But it's a lot of gorgeous shade. Okay, so now they're gonna take the sunshade down and put it back into the bag. All right, we're gonna show you how quick and easy it is to store this thing, okay? We're trying to do this a little systematically like because like I said the boat's so dirty. I don't want to get this brand new sunshade dirty. Okay. Just push the button, pull it out. That had to be under a minute to take that big 16 foot sunshade down okay now it's safe in its storage bag and like I say these things should last a lifetime as long as you don't put them away wet and if you want to run you can keep your poles in run and then put the sunshade back up you don't have to take the poles down if you think you're gonna have it up again this one's got six poles so this this bags a little bit wider but still does the exact same thing keeps all these poles from scratching each other. So they'll, st they'll, they'll look nice 10 years from now. It's all padded in there. And then we Velcro it shut. Now this one, since it was so big, I added a Velcro strap to it just to kind of keep it a little more orderly. So we're going to store this down inside the console for now. I'm sure the owner of the boat will find his favorite place to keep it. The Canvas Factory makes most of their work very custom, hands-on, right on the boat. But these sail shades have become so popular, for a while I wasn't making them for anybody unless they were local. But I was getting calls from all over the country, so I was like, how can I build sunshades for these beautiful sunshades for people out of state? So I came up with, with a way to do it, and I've done quite a few already, where I've, I've shipped them to people in New York, Maryland, Texas, all over the place, the west coast of Florida. All it needs is you need to be a little handy with a tape measure. But I'll show you in the video we even take a boat without rod holders and we show how to install the rod holders. When you give me the measurements of the length of the poles that you require, we'll send you the poles in a custom padded bag with the mounts for your hard top, the mounting hardware for the mounts on the hard top, and a rope to string it up after you've done that. And then we'll show you in the video how I want the string laid out and exactly how to take the measurements and then we can build you a gorgeous sunshade no matter where you're at. So give us a call. All right, I'm going to show you how to install these rod holders for this forward sunshade. A lot of people call me, I mean, I get, I don't know how many phone calls about sunshades almost daily. And people ask me about what rod holder do I recommend? And you see this Mate Series combination rod and cup holder? This is the one that I recommend, and I'm going to show you why. First of all, it's heavy like an anchor and you can see the finish of it is spectacular. It's a Mate series, and the biggest reason that I wanna use this rod holder is if you've ever installed a rod holder in a boat and you put a 15 degree, you have to hold your hole, your hole saw at a 15 degree angle and drill that hole into the fiberglass. Now, I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound too easy. With a combination cup rod holder, you drill a three and a quarter inch hole, and you get to, I'm gonna show you how to do it, but you get to drill it straight down, a lot easier. And then instead of trying to figure out, well, what angle do I want this in? I can drop it in and then just dial it. So I'm gonna to get to it right now. This company, actually, if you don't have a hole saw, they will mail you a hole saw, and then after you've used it, you have to mail it back to them but it's great, they'll send you the hardware, and here's one more 
important, important point that I don't want to forget. You see this backing plate? Well, that's a nice heavy duty backing plate. It's going to go underneath the rod holder. When we put this rod holder in the front, you don't want to just self tap it in. That might be fine for a spinning rod, but we're going to put our inch and a quarter stainless steel poles and we're going to torque that baby. So besides, you know, you don't want to do self tappers, you could do big washers and through bolts, but look at that. That's the real deal. Anytime you're using a sunshade, you want to use a rod holder with a backing plate. Now you've really got a super secure rod holder. So we're going to get to it. Here we go. Okay, easy as that. Let's, let's try the fit. Bingo, perfect. We don't have to figure out the angle of this. We can stick our pole in there and then decide exactly where we want it. So I'm gonna drill this other hole now. That's two holes, that don't take long. The reason I really like these cup holder, rod holder combinations, well one, look, the front of this boat doesn't even have a cup holder, so that's a big plus. But now, after I've put this 15 degree rod holder in there, I can spin it to the position that I want it. And I usually recommend people put it at 10 o'clock and two o'clock, okay? Which, there it is. That's the position. Now, I could decide to go a little bit wider with this one, and instead of 2 o'clock, I could go out a little bit more, which, which is what I think I'm going to do on this one. Because I've already got my shade far enough forward, so rather than take it further forward, I think I'm going to go right there. this hole, a little this in this hole, and then I'm going to go around this. My son Fisher has the longest arm, so he's going to do the through bolting of this rod holder. He's got the backing plate, he's got three stainless steel washers, and um, locking nuts with the, um, the Teflon in them, the nylon. When you go to start putting on the backing plate, it's really hard to hold the backing plate and the washer and nut. So if you can stick the backing plate on using a little bit of a, the, the poly seam seal or whatever sealant you're using, it'll free up your hands so you can put that on first and then go grab the, the nut in the washer. Once you have all three of your nuts started, you can get a screwdriver and your ratchet and you could tighten them all. I usually like to get them all almost tight before I go to the next one, just so they kind of tighten evenly. Here's the mount that you're gonna secure the hard top side of the sail shade too, and I'm gonna show you how to mount that now. So, you just pick a nice place on the corner. Not too far back, not too far forward, because if you go too far forward, the sail shade gets narrower. You go too far back, it just gets longer for no good reason. I just like to place it right about in the corner, like that. And then, this is an eighth inch drill bit. And when you're drilling a hard top, there are always two layers. Well, they're usually two layers. I shouldn't say always. 
But if I drill in, I can feel it go through the first layer, and that's how much. So I'm gonna have to use a, a fairly short screw. And you don't need long screws because this is shear pressure, okay? We're not pulling the screws out, we're pulling on the shade like this. So that's, and you always wanna take your driver bit and you stick it in that fiberglass hole, you push down and you turn it. And what that does is it countersinks the gel coat, which makes it less likely to crack. It's really important. Then you're gonna take, I like this all purpose poly seam seal. It's real easy to work with. Just put a little bit, a little dab of that in each hole. Now, I only drilled an eighth of an inch hole. So, you know, you're gonna think that this, this is wrong, but I'm putting a number 10 screw in an eighth inch hole. The reason I'm doing that is I want a real nice tight fit, okay? Because fiber, fiberglass isn't thicker than that. So a longer screw isn't gaining you anything because a quarter inch of fiberglass, that, that's probably more than we have here. Okay, so that's done. That's it. And you wanna make sure you put the button at, towards the back of the boat and that's, that's our mount. Now, to go to the other side, you wanna measure from something. So they've installed this hard top with this screw right here. So if I come to this screw, I've got 13 and a quarter inches to this back screw. So it's nice to have a, a towel when you're working so you can s slide your tools without scratching anything. Now we're over to the other side of the boat. Wanna make sure that our push button is facing the back. Now, this screw here was 13 and a quarter inches to the back screw. Now that's where I have it right now. Boats aren't always square. Uh, usually they're not. So sometimes I like to take two measurements just to check. So I know I'm at 13 and a quarter off of both screws. Now here's, here's a raised panel on this hard top. I'm gonna go to the corner of this raised panel and I've got 29 and a half inches to that back hole. Let's just double check. What do you know? 29 and a half inches to the back hole. So we've got two corresponding measurements now. So I'm gonna go for it. Now, I'm, as I'm pushing, I could feel the drill bit go through that first layer. Pushing, and I can feel it, okay? It's not real deep. I'm gonna go a little deeper on it. Don't forget, take your driver tip, stick it in the hole, push down, countersink that gel coat. It's very important. Now I'm gonna take two short screws, take my poly seam seal, put a little poly seam seal in each hole. This is important because you don't want your hard top filling up with water. Make sure my button's to the back of the boat. Okay, now there, there's the next one. Now if you have a, um, a thicker hard top, I have all different size screws, you know, you can you know, this is, this is more than long enough. I usually like to, you know, use at least that. But you can go longer, but I, I was just a little leery of going too deep through this hard top. If your hard top is thin and you drill through, you could always through bolt. But I've installed over 100 of these and I haven't had to through bolt one yet. So you shouldn't have to. Just be careful when you're drilling. You feel yourself go through that first layer of fiberglass and stop because then there's another thin layer behind that and you won't drill through the bottom. How are you doing, Fisher? Um, we got the uh, backing plate tightened on, so we're ready to move on to the next one. So we're not, we're not guessing on the placement. The rod holder actually comes with this little template. So what we did was we laid the template on these screws and this was Fisher's idea where we ran this yardstick to center and made a pencil mark. 
and it lined up with that pencil mark on center. Then we came over here and did the same thing. We put it in the screw holes and we, we dialed it until it lined up with center. Now we should be pretty darn close with our, with our rod placement. So I'm going to go ahead and drill it. I'm going to take my poly seam seal, put it in the three holes, and then just like last time, I'm going to go around the perimeter of the rod holder. I'm going to drop that in. These aren't just stainless steel bolts, but they're actually chrome plated stainless steel. Mate Series sent me these as well. They're, they're supposedly one step above just using regular stainless steel, chrome plated stainless steel. And they sure look pretty to me. So Fisher's going to go ahead and through bolt this rod holder for us now. After we've determined the height of the forward poles and I've shipped you your poles with your custom padded bag and your mounts and I send you the mounting hardware and the rope, this is what I'm going to require from you. you. You tie one end off, you go from pulley to pulley, back to mount, and then when you get to here, you put a little loop in here and you pull on this. And when you think you have it tight, pull it some more. You think you got it tight? Pull it some more. I want this thing tight, tight, tight. Super tight to where you think you're going to pull screws out or something. I, I want it super tight. Otherwise your sail shade won't be able to be tightened up. Now I'm going to show you the measurements that I want. First measurement I want is you see the center of this mount? We're going to take a measurement from the center of that mount to center of this mount is 66 and a half inches. Okay? We're going to take a measurement from the front of this pulley. See where Fisher's holding it? On the front of that pulley to the center of this mount is 95. We're going to do this side. From the front of that pulley to the center of this is 95 inches. Guess what? We put those poles in perfect. We got those rod holders dead on, or these measurements wouldn't be identical. So I'm real happy with that. I need this measurement here. From pulley to pulley is 58 inches. The way we determined this height, okay, this hardtop is 80 four inches, which is about standard. When you measure your hardtop, it's going to be 83, 84, 85, and that's what we got. Uh, approximately 84 and a half, 85 inches. Now, you have to do some math. You know, you, you have to measure. All right, so that's 11 and a half. This is going to be a little hard to measure because it's got this. All right, 19 and a half and 11 and a half is 31. If you take 31 from 84. 84 is 53. Now here, I've got 48, which I want the front. I want it to pitch down. You have about, oh, a four inch pitch here. I like a four inch pitch. If you want to do a three inch pitch, do a three inch pitch. Um, anywhere is between a three and a four inch pitch, I think looks good. So this is what I need from you after I've sent you the poles, the padded bag, the mounting hardware, I'll send you a rope, the screws, I'll send you everything. You pull it really tight and give me these four measurements and we can ship you out a, a sail shade in a day or two. Sunshades on two different boats and if you're interested in one I will have all of my dad's contact information linked in the description and I said I don't work for him anymore but technically that's not true because I still make videos for him on his YouTube channel. Now he has a YouTube channel with lots of different videos about making sunshades on a lot of boats 
full boat covers, all that kind of stuff. Now, as well as sunshades, the Camus factory makes everything you can think of that you would need on a boat. Covers, bimini's, enclosures, cushions, all that stuff. So I will have my dad's website linked down below, as well as his YouTube channel, which is Boat Canvas Factory. Now, if you have any questions, make sure you comment down below and I'll answer your questions. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this different kind of video and I will see you in the next one.